There are some new faces and new numbers in the 2020 Democratic field. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker's campaign says it raised more than $5 million in February and March. It did not reveal anything about the number of donors or the share of small donors. And Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar's campaign announced it raised $5.2 million in seven weeks. Right now, Senator Bernie Sanders is, leading, is the leading fundraiser with $18 million. Let's bring in CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe, who is in Washington. Ed, great to see you. Uh, let's talk about uh, these numbers. So Senator Booker's and Senator Klobuchar's campaigns raised less than what Senator Bernie Sanders or former Congressman Beto O'Rourke made on the day they announced. Candidates yeah. have one week to file their first quarter fundraising reports. Why would they release their totals when they don't look as good in comparison to some other people running? Because they're hoping we don't notice, and we did, um, <laughs> quite honestly. <laughs> Nothing gets uh, past you, Ed O'Keefe. <laughs> exactly. But also because I think they sort of take a different uh, tact on all this. While, they, you know, they've said since the start, we're never going to raise the money, at least early on, that, that the bees have raised. Beto, uh, Bernie, Buttigieg, and and presumably Biden whenever he gets it. Well, they're called they the bees. To... I didn't know that. Okay. Well, I call them that. <laughs> okay, the good. four bees. Um, and, and they also argue, look, you don't need to have all that money today. You need to have that money a year from now when people are actually casting votes. Uh, the other incentive or the issue here for these senators is that uh, all of them who are running for president now began the race with at least a handful of millions of dollars in their Senate re-election campaigns mm -hmm. that can be transferred into their presidential campaigns. So they actually start with a bit of a nest egg already. Sanders had more than $4 million, I believe, left. Uh, Elizabeth Warren's campaign war chest had about $10 million left over from her 2018 campaign. Klobuchar's had about $3 million. So you take the uh, give and take, the $3 million plus the $5 million, she raised eight, she's got about $7 million left in the bank. Mm. The problem there is, as, as some of her competitors have pointed out, is she is already raising money for the general election campaign, in mm. addition to her primary election. And so that actually kind of inflates her numbers in a way that don't lend themselves well to an apples-to-apples -apples comparison with, say, Senator Booker. Because some of the money she's raised, she can't touch unless or until she becomes the Democratic presidential nominee. So it inflates her number to keep her on par and get her into this conversation but isn't necessarily money she can even access just yet. As far as we can tell, nobody else uh, among the top tier bigger names is doing this. And it's sort of a head scratching issue for some of her other uh, opponents as to why she would be asking people to give uh, essentially uh, 5,600, uh, if I'm doing the math right, roughly $5,400 total, uh, as opposed to the $2,700 limit for a primary campaign. Hmm. Well, so far, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders is the leading fundraising, uh, fundraising leader. A new piece in the AP says Sanders has, quote, largely embraced his new frontrunner status. More than any other candidate, he draws explicit comparisons with President Donald Trump in his campaign remarks, previewing his approach to a general election face-off with the incumbent Republican. But it goes on to say that his current standing is, quote, not entirely enviable. So what are the potential problems, Ed, with being seen as a front runner this early on in the race? The problem is that what goes up must come down. And so the concern that every campaign has when they start getting talked about this early in a, in a cycle is that they're going to run out of juice and we're going to stop paying attention to them and voters are going to go look for somebody else because they get bored with that candidate. There's no denying that Sanders begins this race uh, ahead of everybody else. He was the runner-up in 16. He had a considerable operation that continued running over the last four years. He's learning from his mistakes and adapting his strategy, having been through it once before, uh, hiring a far more diverse staff, uh, predominantly women, uh, which uh, addresses a criticism not only of him but of others that are running, that Democratic campaign staffs are not nearly as reflective of the Democratic voting diaspora. Uh, this is somebody who's spending more time outside of New Hampshire and Iowa and in other states in a bid to build out his campaign early in states that come later in the calendar because he thinks he can. Uh, and he's still clearly enjoying the trappings of, of high name recognition, which has helped fueling the money that he's able to raise. So, uh, you know, his, his, his campaign staff would tell you they're pretty pleased with where they are right now, and they anticipate that it'll be very hard for anybody else to catch them, at least for a little while. So, Ed, former President Obama spoke at a town hall in Germany over the weekend for hundreds of young leaders from across Europe. And here's what he said about progressives. Let's listen.
What's true for me when I was a president or an elected official, it's going to be true for you as well, even within your own organizations. And one of the things I do worry about sometimes uh, among progressives in the United States, maybe it's true here as well, um, is a certain kind of rigidity where we say, ah, I'm sorry, this is how it's going to be, and then we start sometimes creating what's called a uh, circular firing squad where you start shooting at your allies because one of them is straying from purity on the issues. Uh, and when that happens, typically the overall effort and movement weakens. Mr. Obama has maintained a relatively low profile since leaving office, but he briefly took an active role in campaigning for Democrats before midterms. What do you make of his concern about progressives and potential litmus tests? The list of candidates that he endorsed last year and the warnings he made in Berlin over the weekend match up. The people he endorsed in most cases were people who had worked for his administration or were running in competitive House districts and other state government races across the country and were generally seen as moderate or more mainstream Democrats and not the sort of liberal, more strident, progressive types uh, that have gained a lot of attention, frankly, since winning and getting into office. Uh, by the way, I looked up the translation of circular firing squad in German. I don't know if we can zoom in on that, but it's pretty complex. Um, <laughs> clearly, I think he was trying to, uh, to hear. Uh, if anyone speaks German, that's, that's what it is. Um, I, you know, I think that's what he was trying to see if it actually translated into German. Can we see? Is the glare too bad there? Oh, might I be. don't see it, Ed. Is it there just we go. me? There we, oh, oh, there we go. Zoom in. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'll take your word for it. But it's but it's a it's a concern that even Joe Biden expressed last week. Remember mm -hmm. the comments he made after his speech uh, here in Washington, that he believes that the Democratic Party is still, for the most part, centrist, uh, center left, and not skewing to the far polar extremes, as they as Biden said, some in the media would lead you to believe. We'll see. Uh, you know, as we saw in 2016. Uh, the Republican primary dragged the Republicans off to the right. There are concerns among many Democrats that some of these candidates running right now are going to drag the party further to the left to make it difficult for them to make a broader general election argument. And clearly, for a former president who has so far, and trust me, we make attempts to get his take on things almost every week, uh, who has been pretty tight-lipped on the specifics of this campaign, that should be seen by Democrats as a, as a sort of warning shot uh, from their former leader that the party's got to be careful about skewing a little too far to the left over the course of this bitter primary. All right. Ed O'Keefe in Washington. Ed, you should tweet out that screenshot later. I don't think we got uh, it, so. I, I will uh, I'll <laughs> We're do that waiting right with now. bated breath. Okay. Ed O'Keefe, thank you. Take care, Elaine.